Hi there, welcome to London Visited and welcome to our video. And if you know London at all, you'll recognise this immediately as being Covent Garden, one of the most popular places that we cover and also have discussions about in our community tab. Not long ago, we did part one of our video, 10 things to do at Covent Garden. And now here comes part two. Yes, today we're going to look at 10 more great things that you can do whilst you're over at Covent Garden. We've got some fantastic things to show you and some little gems as well. But one of the main things you're going to be wanting to look out for is this amazing toy shop, which is based here at Covent Garden. Not only for children, but adults, you're going to be absolutely mesmerized by it as well. So sit back and enjoy our second 10 best things to enjoy here at Covent Garden. Now for our first place, we're standing on Longacre, which takes you from Leicester Square Tube Station all the way to Covent Garden Tube Station. And you're looking for this sign, TK Maxx, and you're looking for here, this tunnel that's underneath it. Welcome to our first place, Conduit Court. The alleyway takes you from Longacre through to Floral Street, which is beautiful in itself and we'll be covering later in this video. But you want to go through here because if you want to put a picture on Instagram and impress your friends, then you want to come through this light tunnel. And whether you do it by day or by night, it's a fantastic place to come. The lights change colour, but I would also recommend coming off peak times because this is such a popular place. Trying to get a picture with just you in the tunnel or no one in the tunnel can be difficult at times. So here we go, number one, Conduit Court. If you've seen photos of London, then you'll instantly recognise our next place, Neil's Yard. But did you know it's in the Covent Garden area? Now this is a place where you blink and you might miss it. So you're looking to get to either Shorts Gardens or Monmouth Street because it runs between the two and you'll find alleyways that lead you to this little place, this courtyard, which is Neil's Yard. Now, if you're a regular watcher, you'll also know that I always say in London, look up. So if you want to find these alleyways even easier, then you're looking for a parcel or a barrel hanging down. Also, here's a London visited tip. There's an amazing pizza place here. So if you're hungry, get down here, but you may want to book a table first. It's incredible. The yard is very small, contains a couple of shops and cafes, but it's well worth a visit just to see these beautiful colors. Right, it's time for a food break and we're going to here, Seven Dials Market. And by the way, these nachos are absolutely glorious, but let me leave them just for a second and show you around Seven Dials Market, which is a great place if you fancy sitting down, taking the weight off your feet and having a coffee, having a beer, or alternatively, just having some food with the family. Now this is in the middle of lunchtime and there's plenty of places still to come here and sit and eat. So whenever you come down here, you'll find somewhere to sit and eat. But the thing that I really love about this place is the selection of food that you've got. So there's something for everyone. So if someone doesn't like this, but you fancy it, then you can order it off their menu and they deliver it to you. So it's a bit like a Uber Eats or a Deliveroo, but you're sitting there ready, waiting for it to be delivered to the place you're sitting at. This is an old converted warehouse. It's only been open for a couple of years, but the selection of food is fantastic. And the selection of different places you can eat in and the different views you can get out across the Covent Garden streets are also great. Also, before you come into Seven Dials Market, there's an alleyway. And in that alleyway, there's different food retailers where you can buy stuff to take away. Or alternatively, there's different jewelers. There's all different sorts of homemade, home crafted items that you can buy as well. As you can see at different times out there here, we've got Wimbledon on, but there's also a bookshop downstairs as well. So if you fancy having a browse in a book, then great place for you to come. My favorite reason for coming here, because you've got people of all different tastes. So you can come down here and everyone can have what they want and be happy. Prices, you're in London, so you pay London prices. Now we're back on the Covent Garden Piazza for our next place. And actually the building that houses the London Transport Museum was the old fruit and flower veg market before it moved off. Now the London Transport Museum is one of those places that you can go to in Covent Garden. And actually I'll put a video to that in the top right hand corner, but that's not the reason we're coming here today. No, we're coming here today to look one around the souvenir shop and some of the things that you can buy relating to London transport. And also we're going to go to the cafe, which is upstairs, which I believe you me is an absolute treat. Now, as a London fan, for some unknown reason, every time I come here, I always seem to pick something up to bring home, either for myself or alternatively to give away on London Lookabout. So if in future London Lookabouts, you see something being given away, which relates to London transport, it's probably from here. 
And the thing I find absolutely incredible is if you want something with a different London underground line on it, you can have it. Like the different types of moquette, which is a type of fabric which is used in the different train lines. And here you've even got cushions and furniture with it on as well. Now the great thing here also, there's an upstairs to it. Up here is more about the books, but also a great selection of London transport posters and underground maps. Some of these posters are from years ago and actually as a young boy I actually remember this one with the paint. So that's got my name on for a future visit, that I can promise you. Now if you look up and we're going to see it again very shortly, you've got these neon lights and I'm going to show you the significance of those in a minute. But as we pan round on the first floor you can see you've got the whole canteen area. In other words you've got the London Transport Museum Cafe which is accessible to everybody so you don't need to go into the museum to come here. There's lots of space and also great choice as well and I'll show you the menu in a couple of seconds. Also the great thing here, oh she looks a little bit wide that I'm filming her, uh, but the great thing here as well is for London prices this is quite reasonable. It's funny because this is one of these places you don't think you're coming into because you think you've got to go into the museum which you haven't. Right I'll show you those neon lights, when you look from the ground floor upwards, yes it's the tube map. Now we go from the corner of the piazza right to the centre of the piazza and this is our fifth thing to do when you're in Covent Garden. So here we're in the South Hall but we're actually in the basement bit. Now what tends to happen when you come to Covent Garden is you tend to walk around the outside like you can see the people doing upstairs and then you watch the music which is performing which is normally from where I'm standing at the moment and then people sort of move on. But don't necessarily think about coming down these steps and coming and having a look down here. Now whilst there's different places that you can eat, there's also a few shops and also some great views you can get just by coming down to the basement area here in the South Hall. Now this is definitely a place to come and have a look at. Um, if you're thinking of eating then you may need to take a, a second mortgage. But anyway, don't tell them I said so. But you can come down here, you've got different shops that you can look at and also as you can see here you've got a Wittard's tea and coffee place as well as other shops to browse in as well. The couple of things I like most about coming down to this basement area is one, not many people do it. So when you come down here it's normally quite quiet even if it is absolutely mad and bustling out on the piazza. And two, it gives you different views of Covent Garden as well which you wouldn't normally get to see. Really hope you're enjoying our guide to 10 great things you can do at Covent Garden and if you are do us a favour will you give us a thumbs up so then YouTube can spread this to more people so more people can love London as well. Another great thing about coming to the Piazza is not only is it in the hub of everything that happens in central London but also if the weather's not that good then it doesn't matter because you're undercover. We're now going to take you right from the centre of Covent Garden Piazza to about 100 metres away and we're going to go to Floral Street and Floral Court. Now if you want to see great parts of London the best thing to always do is just take the side roads off the main areas and that's where you'll find little gems and little gems like this place. And the shop here on the right is a coffee shop so it's well worth a visit just to look through those flowers the other way. Now this cobbled street is Floral Street and we'll be coming back down here very very shortly but before we do let's go into Floral Court which has a couple of restaurants and food places so it's well worth taking a visit down here but not just to look at the restaurants and also the food places but to see the greenery and the tucked away court. Now Floral Court will take you from Floral Street all the way through to King Street and we'll show you that later as another one of those places to go in Covent Garden. But as you get into the courtyard here you are surrounded by beautiful greenery and then when you look closely it's actually two restaurants on either side of you. So on this side you've got the Petersham's. Now you've got the Petersham uh, Organic Italian Organic Restaurant and you've also got the Petersham Nurseries Delicatessen and Cellar which goes through and on this side you've got the Gocha Restaurant as well. 
The food at both of these looks fantastic. You'll need to book well in advance if you want to make sure that you get a table here. And also you probably need a bit of money as well. So it's London prices and you're in the middle of Covent Garden. So just giving you a bit of a warning. And alternatively, just do as I'm doing, which is have a good walk around the courtyard and have a good look at the flowers and the plants and just take in the lovely scenery. And by the way, on a hot summer's day, this is also a great place to come because the greenery keeps it all very well shaded. Now, as we go through this passageway here, on the left-hand side is the Petersham Nursery's Delicatessen and Cellar. And also you can go in there and have a cup of coffee. So if you want to watch the world go by, another great place. And this is King Street. Right, returning back into the courtyard. Nice bench for a great sit down. So if you're going to get a coffee, you can come and sit out here if there's space, of course, and you're back in. And by the way, if you missed the elephant because it was hidden by the greenery, yes, that was standing there. You may well have missed it. Right, let's head from Floral Court back onto the cobbled stones of Floral Street. Now, if you're looking for Floral Street, it runs parallel with Longacre. It takes you from Garrick Street to James's Street. And James's Street is that main road that takes you from Covent Garden Tube Station all the way to the Piazza. But like anything, if you really want to see some really good bits, you get off Longacre, which is the main busy thoroughfare through to Covent Garden Tube Station. Now, you have a look at the beautiful shops because it's a great place to come if you want to do window shopping or alternatively if you've got the money and want to do the shopping. But this road was originally called Hart Street and it changed its name to Floral Street in 1895 to reflect the market trade. Originally, the street was a cul-de-sac and due to its narrowness, the street was never really a sought after residential address in comparison to the surroundings, though Joseph Haynes lived there and died there in 1701. If you're scratching your head wondering who the heck is this Joseph Haynes you talk of, well, in the 17th century, he was an actor, singer, dancer, guitar player, fortune teller and an author. I wonder if he actually foresaw how beautiful this road would actually become. Back at this street's peak in the 18th century, there were no fewer than 11 pubs on the street. Absolutely incredible. Now there's one main one, which is the White Lion, which we'll see very, very shortly on the left-hand side. Now, let me show you something secret here. Yes, it's an ear on the wall. Now, this is one of two ears which have been stuck on the walls down here in Floral Street. Now, there's a little game you can play, and I've put a link to our video at the top right-hand corner, which is called uh, Find the Two Ears and also the Seven Noses of Soho. Yes, people have gone, taken plaster casts of their ears down here and noses all over Soho, and they've put them in different places. So it's like a hide-and-seek game. Now the other ear is on the right hand side here by Ted Baker, but it's covered by the greenery. So you have to look really, really hard. And believe you me, you don't have to get some funny looks from the shop assistants who come out and ask you what you're actually doing with their ivy. Anyway, continuing our walk. Now, if you look ahead, you can see a bridge. Now it's a sky bridge that links the Royal Ballet School and the Royal Opera House. And it is called the Bridge of Aspiration. Now, if you think that looks weird on the outside, Here's a picture of what it looks like inside. That's one bridge you want to be stone cold sober when you're crossing here in London. Anyway, we're going to continue down Floral Street, which is just on the other side of St. James's Street. And then you've got the cart going across. And this part takes you down to Bow Street. For our next must-see thing to do over in Covent Garden, we're back in the main piazza. We're in the Central Avenue and we're going in here. Pollock's Theatrical Warehouse. It's otherwise known as Benjamin Pollock's Toy Shop. Now this is the entrance from the Central Avenue, but you can also get it from it as well from the South Hall. And then you go upstairs and see the wonders that it has. And it's really easy to see from the South Hall. There you go, nice and brightly coloured. Now, it's not like a toy shop that you'd probably imagine. Are you ready? Here we're in for a treat. Now Pollock's sells vintage and retro toys, and it's one of the oldest toy shops in London and had its origins in Hoxton, which is just in East London, in 1851, before being taken over in 1877 by Benjamin Pollock, who ran it to his death in 1937. The toy shop specialises in Victorian toy theatres, both original and reproduction, in addition to books, puppets, music boxes and other traditional toys as well. And just look at these. Yes, these are all made with card and are in 3D. I 
I think these theatres are absolutely incredible. If you look at the detailing and the colouring that have gone into them, it's absolutely remarkable. You buy these flat and then you build them out and they look this amazing. Now, if you're heading off to the Globe Theatre, you may be interested in this one. How about this? It's a Shakespeare's theatre kit. And it's interesting that the creation of pantomime happened just around the corner from here at the Royal Opera House. And here you've got a pantomime theatre as well. We covered this on a recent London Visited podcast. So if you're not a listener to our podcasts, then get online quick. The detail's incredible and this is just a pop-up, but how about this minute one? And if your children are into Beauty and the Beast, how about these two theatres as well, especially for them? There really is something for everyone up here, that's adults and children alike, and there are pocket money toys as well up here for the children, so everyone's happy, entertained, whilst the adults are looking around and going wow at the detail as well. This place is so easy to miss, and actually this is the first time I've ever been in here myself, so it's a little treasure trove. So enjoy it if you get up here. Right, let's go to our next place in Covent Garden, and welcome to King Street. King Street is one of two roads that run parallel that take you from Bedford Street, which is one of the busy roads that takes you up from the Strand, round through to Leicester Square, and it takes you all the way to the Piazza. But this is probably the prettiest of them. Just look at these buildings. As we showed you earlier, that's the entrance into Floral Court that we show you. See, everything is so close here together, and that's why this is a lovely street to walk down because it's one of those interlinking streets. The white building you can see at the far end, that's the Royal Opera House, and we showed you that in our last video, the uh, first 10 things to do, and you can get up on that balcony, which is above the white building. So don't forget to go there, and I'll put a link to that video right at the very end of this video. Now sandwiched between here and King Street and Henrietta Street, which is the one that runs parallel, you have St Paul's Church, which is that's the alleyway that takes you down through to the gardens, and that's also featured in our previous video as well. The lovely thing in the summer is that the restaurants spill out onto the street, so you can have a sort of Mediterranean street eating sitting out here, plus you can also have a good look at the shops as well. This shop with the multicoloured is a sort of pop-up shop, so it's been empty for some time, but quite often you'll find that someone will take over it for a day or a week or so, so do keep an eye on these sorts of places because you never know what might appear. And then, when you get to the end of King Street, you are there, bang, right in the piazza, here at Covent Garden, and you're right by the street entertainment as well. For me, once you get past the bins there, this is one of the best views of Covent Garden, definitely. So King Street's only a very short walk, but actually does have that Mediterranean feeling. If you've been watching our previous footage of bits of Covent Garden, you won't have failed to escape this balcony and this pub. This is the Punch and Judy pub, which is here at Covent Garden, but it overlooks the whole piazza. And actually, if you want to see street entertainment, this is a great place to come. Now the pub is on two floors. You can go down into the basement, which is open. You can get food down there and also hot drinks. Or alternatively, the other floor is up on the balcony, up on the first floor. It doesn't have a ground floor level. Also, access is only by stairs, so just be aware of that if you have accessibility issues. Also, the first floor is a strictly over 18s only. So if you have young children with you, you won't be able to go up there. So just bear that in mind. But if you're down here and you're looking around Covent Garden on your own and you're over 18, do pop in. Now, when you get onto the first floor, you're greeted in this room. As you can tell from the decor, it is a bit dated and some of the upholstery really needs to be redone. But if you're coming up here and it's a beautiful sunny day, you'll have to uh, fight for your spot out there on the balcony and we're going to have a look out there in just a couple of seconds. Or alternatively, if it's a wet day like today, then you can sit in here, have a lemonade and a packet of crisps or whatever you fancy, really. Right, let's go out on the balcony. Now, on a lovely day, this will be, be packed. And also you'll have the street entertainment happening right there in front of you. So you've got a great sight of the street entertainment happening outside St. Paul's Church. But not only that, you get lovely wide views around as well. Now there's quite a bit of seating as you can see around here. So it might be worth just getting your drink standing here and waiting for someone to move and then get in there quick. I must admit, I love discovering places that give you alternative views of places that you know and love. And I love this view here that we're going to take, which is of the Apple Market in the North Hall. 
You feel like you're spying on them from above. From above the apple market looking down to the apple market itself. Fantastic. And now our final thing to do here at Covent Garden in this episode is the deeds of Covent Garden. In both the passageways to the left and the right of the central part which go from the North Hall into the piazza, you have these, the rules, orders and bylaws of Covent Garden Market and it tells you exactly what you can and cannot do and what the penalties are and as you can tell it's in shillings so it's extremely old. It's interesting that these walls were created on the 22nd of May 1924, making them almost 100 years old in the reign of King George IV. I love this one. No person shall ride, lead or drive or bring any horse or other cattle wagon into the area, which is brilliant. So if you're thinking of coming to Covent Garden, either do it on your feet or alternatively get a taxi like lots of other people do, but don't bring your horse. So if you're coming down to Covent Garden, come and search these out. Come and have a look and come and come see if you can find the most ridiculous one. And don't forget, do not bring a lighted candle, all right, into any cellar in the said market because we might all go bang. Thank you. So, which was your favorite in these 10 things to do here at Covent Garden? There's always so much going on. And also, when you're walking around the piazza, and we haven't even covered this, they quite often have different events going on. And as you can see here, they had a champagne one, and we also covered other ones previously on our videos here on London Visited. Other things we haven't included within our 20 great things to do here at Covent Garden in our two videos is have a look at the architecture, which is worth having a look at all on its own, and also just going around the shops generally. So over the two videos, or this one on its own, what was your favorite thing to do that you saw? And what's the thing that you most want to go and do now you've seen our videos? Put it down in the comments down below, It'd be really interesting to see. And also, if it's a really popular one, we may even do a standalone video on that one alone. Now, so here you've got champagne. Here also they've had Harry Potter exhibitions, and yes, you can get the butterbeer. By the way, it tastes yeah, okay, uh, taste to be desired. And they also had a Lego exhibition of Harry Potter as well, where you could sit underneath the sorting hat. No matter how big you were, and you can also have your photo taken in here as well, in a sort of a moving photo booth. The main thing about Covent Garden, there's always something happening. So get down there, come and find out what's happening and enjoy yourself and use some of our things to do as well. So you have a really good time. And as we go through the magic wands, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've put a link to our first part up in the top right hand corner. So if you've not seen that before, click on there. We've got some absolute gems in there, plus a secret or two people don't know, which is completely free. And that's what London's about, is discovering those great free things you can do here in London. And if you click on that, I'll see you in there.